quite the exciting episode for you today. So welcome to another episode of Off the Cuff. I'm your host, Will Rock. And we're going to be discussing the electrifying matchup of Dan Campbell and Sean Payton in what should be a clash of the titans of the gridiron, former teacher and student. Man, I think this is going to be an intense battle on Saturday night, Monday night football. So first, I think I'd like to talk about Sean Payton. I think he deserves all the respect at the beginning of this episode because this win or loss on Saturday is going to highly depend upon what Sean Payton has in store for Dan Campbell. So first, let's talk about the season vet, Sean Payton. He was at the helm of the New Orleans Saints from 2006 to 2021. He has established himself as one of the most successful and innovative coaches in the NFL's history. With a Super Bowl victory under his belt and a reputation for mind-boggling offensive genius, Peyton consistently has kept the Saints in contention over the last few years of his reign. He retired uh, for a brief moment uh, after 2021, only to come back two seasons later to the Denver Broncos in 2023. And what he, he probably didn't really expect, but he's facing a rebuild, rebuilding phase that has a lot of unanswered questions in Denver. So now in his first season with the Broncos, Peyton has seen the lowest of lows and some recent success garnering the attention of the league. But let's not forget something here. The Broncos got completely stomped out 70 to 20 by the Miami Dolphins in what was probably the most embarrassing loss by a football team and a coach since 1950. In 1950, that's when the Rams put up 70 on the Baltimore Colts. Baltimore put up 27. So pretty close in numbers. The Dolphins tied the Rams with the second most points scored in an NFL game. The Redskins hold the record with 72 scored on the Giants in 1966. I mean, that's a, a pretty incredible feat to put up 70 points. Uh, I honestly didn't catch the game uh, live, but I did go back and rewatch it. And man, uh, what an incredible game for the Dolphins. Some other notable games to mention, because you're probably wondering, man, there's, there's been some big blowouts since 1915. There has been. How about the Jets over the Colts in 2003? 41 to nothing. How about the Giants over the Vikings in 2001? 41 to nothing. Or maybe the Jags over the Dolphins, 62 to seven in 2000. The Bills beat the Raiders 51 to 3 in 1991. And the 49ers beat the Broncos 55 to 10 in 1990. The Redskins also beat the Rams in 1984 51 to 7. So there's been quite a few games, but nothing like 70 to 20. The Broncos started 0 and 3 to kick off 2023 season. They beat the Bears finally to go 1 and 3, only to follow it up by two more losses starting one in five through the first third of the 2023 season. And then something clicked. And the Broncos beat the Packers at home, kicking off five straight wins, beating the Chiefs, the Bills, the Vikings, and the Browns along the way. The Broncos have split their last two and now sit at seven and six in what is a six-way tie for the second wildcard berth in the AFC. This Saturday is a big game for the Denver Broncos. To even have a shot at the playoffs this season, this is almost a must-win game. And Sean Payton had this quote uh, about this weekend's game, and I'd like to share it with you. He said, we're going into this game with a lot of respect for the Lions. Dan Campbell has done a great job with the team, and we know they're going to bring their best on Saturday. Well, I sure hope so. I'm expecting that Dan Campbell is going to have this team ready especially after what we've experienced the last few weeks. We just don't know what we're going to get any given Sunday, which is now a Saturday. Deep down, I'm expecting that Dan Campbell is approaching this game a little bit differently. But when we start to speak about, you know, Peyton's former coaches and, and former players, there's always been one that stood out to Peyton. And that was Dan Campbell. Campbell was first a player and then a coach. On his coaching staff in New Orleans, he was named Peyton's assistant head coach and tight ends coach in 2016. And then later it turned out that Sean Payton was trying to hire Campbell for a while. He was trying to get Campbell on his coaching staff long before it became a reality. It took six years after Dan Campbell hung up his cleats as a player before Sean Payton had that opportunity. 
At the AFC coaches breakfast and annual league meetings in Phoenix, Sean Payton had this to say about Dan Campbell. When his career finished, I spent a number of years trying to hire him. It's kind of difficult, you know, to get a coach who's already under contract. And I was finally able to do that. He's smart. He's tough. He's passionate. I think we are in the passion business, and certainly Dan is. He's a tremendous teacher, and he's some, someone that communicates extremely well with his players. Like extremely well. Sometimes it's not what they want to hear, but I think they appreciate that, and it's really good to see him doing well. I also have this clip. Uh, I believe it's the same conference, and it's Sean Payton talking about Dan Campbell. He was asked uh, what type of qualities he likes about Dan Campbell. So let's listen to what Sean Payton had to say. Well, the same qualities I like about him as a player. Um, he's tough. I think he's a great worker. Uh, he's always a good team guy. Um, so all my experience with Dan, really, the Giants, the Cowboys, even at the Saints, has been that of him being a player. And yet from afar, I had a chance to see him coach in Miami and, and watch uh, the success he's had. And then even uh, in a short period of time, you know, becoming the head coach there. So that was an easy decision for me because I just know how he is. And I know, uh, I'll know he's a great teacher. Um, already, I've just had a chance to see a number of things with him in our staff and uh, there's an intensity he brings to what he does. And I think really by and large, we're looking for people with passion and I know that he has it. You know, and he had it the day he arrived in New York, my first year there. Um, that's a good addition for us. I think it's absolutely phenomenal that, you know, Sean Payton speaks uh, about Dan Campbell in such a positive light. But it's not just Sean Payton. It, it's been many coaches and players around the league that have had nothing but great positive things to say about Dan Campbell. And many of us have witnessed it. I mean, the last three seasons, we have seen an amazing transformation, not only, not only of Dan Campbell, but this team. And I think it rolls, you know, right off the back of Sean Payton and what Dan Campbell had learned. And, and that's why I don't think it's any surprise, you know, of what Sean Payton is able to do in Denver. His ability to adapt his offensive schemes, you know, to the strengths of his players has kind of been the hallmark uh, of Sean Payton's coaching career. And it's also something that is synonymous with Dan Campbell and what he's trying to do. But with Sean Payton, it didn't matter. I mean, if it was Drew Brees, if it was Jimmy Graham, Reggie Bush, Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, or Mark Wes Colston, Payton always knew how to maximize his team's potential. So I really don't believe that there's any surprise that, that Sean Payton has this team ready right now and playing well in December. This is going to be a tough matchup. It's going to be an iconic matchup. I think it's going to be one that we're going to watch, want to watch, or hope that we could watch every season. That's not really the reality, just the way that the NFL schedule is laid out every season. But deep down, I think that this is going to be a very good football game. Now on to the other side of the football field. Let's talk about Dan Campbell's journey from interim head coach from the Miami Dolphins to leading the Detroit Lions back to prominence and how it reflects upon his determination and ability to inspire his players. The Motor City Danimal, as some fans have affectionately called Dan Campbell, and how he has injected a different spirit into the Detroit Lions, and now how they've shown glimpses of promise under his leadership. Dan Campbell is a newcomer to the head coaching scene, but already known for his passionate and fiery approach. He has brought a new energy to the Detroit Lions, Despite the challenges, he has instilled a sense of toughness and resilience in this team, making them a force to be reckoned with any given Sunday. But be that as it may, the Lions have had a tough go at it since the Ravens game. There have been many ups and downs, many questions that have gone unanswered. And as of right now, I'd say that there are more downs with this team than, than we would like to see. This team needs to get back up. And Dan was asked about this matchup versus Sean Payton and what this game means to him, if anything. And this is what he had to say. What does this game mean to you, if, if anything, a little extra? 
it means we better be on our stuff because he's going to come here to try and embarrass us. That's what it means. And, uh, and so that's our motivation. That's my motivation. And it's about winning, man. All we got to do is find a way to win. And uh, we're going to have to be at our best. And we will be at our best. So you've heard it. Dan Campbell's going to have this team ready. That's his plan. He doesn't have a choice. The downs on this team have to stop at some point. They have to get rolling. And Dan Campbell knows all too well that the scheme that they run on offense and defense is largely imparted from Sean Payton's playbook. Payton taught this to AG and Dan Campbell. And if anyone knows the X's and O's as well as or better than Dan Campbell and AG, it's Sean Payton. And that edge goes to Sean Payton. Dan was then asked about a prophetic statement that he made about Sean Payton after the, the Broncos were smacked 70 to 20 by the Dolphins. Dan said that Sean would have this team ready to go and playing their best ball in December by the time they made it to Ford Field. A statement that has largely been very accurate. Dan was also asked how he knew that would happen and why it has happened for the Broncos. And he had this to say. Man, you don't do this. You just do this. You just keep putting in the work. You know, you don't, you don't overreact to, to um, what it may appear to be. Man, you just go by the facts. You look at what, what is the issue? What, what is the problem? Is it turnovers? Is it the fundamentals? Is it your first step? Are we not getting the call fast enough? And when you go back and look at anything that has hurt us, it's, it's our own issues, and it's the little things that, that come from day one. And honestly, the teams that are winning and consistently win are the ones that do the little, little things right, the fundamentals, they take care of the football, they get takeaways, um, and those are the most consistent teams. Um, and so all we got to do is get back to that, man, playing cl clean football. Um, and it really is as simple as that. It doesn't mean it's easy, but it is that simple. It, and it's all in our hands. It's all in our control, and that's, that's, the, that's the great thing about it. So Dan Campbell recognizes that this team has a huge challenge this Saturday, but it's not only from the opponent standpoint and going up against his former boss and coach and Sean Payton, but it's also all of the internal issues that he has left to clean up in such a short week. He needs to get his team back to playing top tier football again with the most important measuring stick being that this team needs to play a clean game, eliminating the self-inflicted pain of untimely penalties and bad play calling. Dan Campbell spoke about that challenge right here um we know what we got to do i know exactly what we have to do and i know this it all starts tomorrow we gotta go back to work and i know today we got to put together a great game plan you know we're on a short week and uh this team's playing at a high level they get takeaways number one in the league um they're efficient on offense and uh, and so we got our hands full as we approach the matchup this saturday it's essential to look at the key factors that could determine the outcome of this game one of the critical battles will be on the offensive side of the ball for the Lions. Will Sean Payton's strategic defensive play calling be too much for this high-powered Lions offense? Will turnovers be a huge nightmare for this Lions team once again? Or will it be a well-controlled and fascinating game for the Lions fans to watch unfold? These are just some of the issues that Dan Campbell needs to get cleaned up before Saturday. But on the other side of the football, the Lions defense could be in for a tough day. Russell Wilson is not as mobile as he once was, but even at 34 years old, he is still a problem on the football field, if you let him be. And the Lions tend to let mobile quarterbacks just be and do what they do. The Lions defense has been in shambles, and Cortland Sutton could potentially have a career day. Sean Payton loves to mix things up. He uses a combination of quick passes, creative play calling and designs, and a strong running game. Campbell, on the other hand, emphasizes physicality and discipline on defense, which has been gone. It's going to be a clash of styles for sure, and whichever team can impose their will just might come out on top. But like any game, I would expect that there's going to have to be just a little bit of luck. Someone's going to have to get lucky in this turnover game. Lastly, let's not forget about the impact of special teams and fourth down coaching decisions. Sean Payton is known for his bold offensive play calling from successful onside kicks in the Super Bowl to his notorious ambush onside kick to start the second half versus the Colts. Meanwhile, Dan is known for his aggressive fourth down mentality, which might lead to unconventional strategies that could catch the Broncos off guard. This game could come down to a crucial special teams play or a gutsy coaching decision. Both Payton and Campbell have a history of taking risks, and it'll be interesting to see who blinks first or who comes up with the master stroke that swings the momentum in their team's favor. I think that we can all agree that Saturday's matchup between the Lions and the Broncos 
promises to be a clash of coaching philosophies, offensive strategies, and defensive prowess. Will the experienced and innovative Sean Payton outmaneuver the passionate and determined Dan Campbell? Only time will tell, and the clock's already ticking. But man, this Saturday could be a game of the ages, a game that we're going to talk about for a long time. And that we're not revisiting what we just went through the last 24 to 48 hours. Until then, please do us the favor and become the next best supporter of this channel by clicking the subscribe button below and help us reach our goal of 3,500 subscribers by Christmas. You guys have been excellent. Like truly, I, I can't thank you enough. And, uh, and it means a lot. But not only am I pumped, come on, let's get these Lions pumped up for this game this Saturday. Let's get all these Lions fans ready to rock out Ford Field. So let's go one pride. Let's go Detroit Lions. And until next time, we'll see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.